Yeah, man. Me too. Hello, chat. Dan VR. Uh, it's been a while since I did one of these just like personal sort of commentary videos, but you guys really seem to love them. So I think I'm going to try and do them more consistently. Maybe. I don't know about daily. I, I don't have that much going on in my life. Maybe, I don't know, once a week, a few times a week, to be determined. I did miss the daily upload yesterday for the daily dose of Dan Woken. Uh, for those of you that follow my social medias, my Instagram, on screen by the way, follow right now. Uh, yesterday, my city had something called Beer Fest, so I went out with all of my friends, and I was blackout drunk by probably 2.30 in the afternoon. And then things started at noon, so to be expected, but yeah. There was, there was actually no way I was going to be able to sit down and watch a video, let alone fucking make one. Like, I couldn't even sit at my desk. When I did eventually get home later that night, I just fucking belly flopped onto my bed and fucking drifted off. I made it to Agartha, which is just a shit ton of beer. I think... I don't know. I have to find the paper. I think I used 18 or 19 of my 25 drink tickets, which is like... Um, you essentially go into this convention center and there's a bunch of tents set up with like trucks and kegs and everything. And you get like a, a souvenir mug. It was like an eight or nine ounce uh, thing. And you just walk up and like, oh, I want that one. They pour it to you. You give them a ticket. You walk away and just fucking booze. So, yeah, I was feeling some type of way. It was it was good. There was just a lot going on yesterday. It was, uh, man, by the end of the event, because we had gone as a big group and then we also met up with other people down there so at the end of the event it was probably 15 or 16 of us and i'm with my buddy will as they're like clearing us out of the convention center like all right we gotta not only do we have to wait for the bus back to can uh campus but it takes like 10 or 15 minutes like just riding it I'm like all right we'll run in the bathroom so you guys like just wait out here we go to the bathroom step out shit you not everyone was gone 15 or 16 people, all of them gone. Not a word, not a message, nothing. Just fucking vanished into the wind. Like fucking fairy dust. So that was like, I don't know. Stepping out and seeing everybody was gone. It's just like, bro, are you serious? It was, uh, it was interesting. Because of that, we missed the bus. So my friend and I were just straight up walking around downtown in my city. Essentially just doing dumb shit. We eventually got down to like the river. We were like right by the water. And he had one of his friends and she agreed to come pick us up. Now I'd, I'd never met this girl. All I knew is that she was like the Rose Queen for the fraternity, I think last year or something. So she comes and picks us up. We get the ride back. It's pretty good. Eventually, as we're getting closer to campus, she just says, all right, I'm just gonna take you guys back to my place. So we get in there. And it's her and her sorority sister. So it's like her and four or five other women just in this fucking living room, uh, like pre-gaming a bar or like a night out. So I'm here with my friend, Will, surrounded by these girls I've never met before. And they're like having this personal conversation. I don't know. It was an, it was an experience. I shit you not. You're bad. That's hurtful, bro. Uh, find God, find bitches, find a band. Anyways, no, so we're there. I'm with my friend Will. I've never met these girls before. And they're having this like personal conversation about, I don't know, so the, the last guy that fucked one of them over. And we're kind of just sitting there hanging out. I mean, I, I jump into the conversation when I can. And they drop this fucking bomb out of nowhere. That like maybe a month or two ago, one of the roommates in their house killed herself. And I mean, it, it's not funny. Okay, it's not funny, but... The girl had, like, mental issues, and she was fighting with other girls in the house. It was her 21st birthday, and she's like, You guys aren't making me feel special. This is supposed to be all my night, and you're not doing anything for me. This is supposed to be about me. Like, they were having a screaming match in the bar. And eventually, and it was, like, not a packed bar. It was, like, semi full so, like, everybody was quiet just listening to this shit. So eventually, the girl whose birthday it is... She goes back to their apartment without everyone, like, in tears. And she was so fucking pissed at them that she killed herself. Like, I shit you not, she was so pissed at them for 
not making her feel special on her birthday that she killed herself in her room. And they didn't know until the next day because no one had heard from her or seen her since. So they went in her room to kind of like try and see if she was in there. And they found her, they found her body. And they dropped that mid-conversation. Like that was just something, something normal happens to everybody. Oh yeah, I remember, I remember when my roommate killed himself. Yeah, that was fucking crazy. Like, I don't even know. It was, it was hard enough because women scare me. I would rather walk down the street at 4 a.m. towards like prime Mike Tyson and the entire Crips and Bloods in this nation. Like, I would rather walk down the street and have a dude be like, Hey, yo, bruh, what kind of shoes are those? Hey, let me use your phone. I would rather deal with that than walk next to or be in the same room as a group of white women because they are terrifying. Especially when they, like, start laughing and you don't really know what it's about. Haunts my fucking dreams, dude. But eventually we leave because they're going to the bar or whatever. And we're, like, walking down their street. And there's fucking music bumping. Further down the street, there's like a house party going on. And at this point, I'm fucking like pissed drunk. All I want to do is go and get this fucking Chinese food. There's this goddamn place called Monkey King. And it's the best fucking Chinese food I've ever had. And all I wanted to do is go and get a fucking platter. And my friend keeps, dude, let's go back there. Like, they wouldn't have the music that loud if they didn't want us to be there. I'm like, please. Please kill yourself. Because he's just as drunk as me. So I could tell, like, this esoteric knowledge that he's dropping. Yeah, man, I don't think because the music's loud, it means they want us to walk into their backyard and just fucking go join the party. But eventually, eventually, he just says, fuck it, and we leave. We end up going over to the fraternity house to chat with a few people and eat. And after that, we just hang out with a few of our friends we were gonna try and rally for the bars but dude at fucking like 7 30 ish 8 it felt like i was a i was like being weighed down my whole body felt so heavy i just needed to like take a shower and fucking drift out but that was my day damn good day again hey you would you guys would know you would have seen everything unfold if you followed uh, dan's virtual reality on instagram we are almost at 500 members quick uh self plug there on my own channel but it was a good time i'm not gonna i was tweaking a little bit i was tweaking a little bit at times because i've kind of been like in my feels lately i've had this um ex-girlfriend who sort of come back into my life uh and i brought it up in a previous video that she came back around but i don't really know how i want to handle that i know i'll regret it if i just tell her to fuck off and never talk to her again because she meant, it's like, we, the relationship meant so much to me. But simultaneously, it's like, there's nothing left for me here. We haven't talked in over a year. It, it was a really bad breakup. Like, she fully hated me for a long time. So it's like, what, what, what good would come from me talking to you, you know? But I know that I'll regret it. Because I want to try and get that closure for me. Once you guys... Man, I'm sure you know. I'm sure you know what I mean. Just how important it is to get that closure. And I know people will tell me like, oh, you have to make your own closure. And you don't need closure. Muffet, you are lying to my face. Yes, the fuck I do, bro. It just, I don't know. It would feel good to just have things like capped off like this is it. Everything is tied up nicely. And like we undeniably did mean so much to one another that I don't know having this person want to be in my life and just not knowing how to handle it has been weighing on my consciousness because <sighs> I mean life's never easy it seems but she I think I had my first love when I was in high school and that fucked me up so bad I shit you not, I could only date casually for like four or five years after. So this girl now, I guess my second love, is like the first woman that I could like feel love for since my first. So it holds like that that special place in my heart, you know. Oh. 
Okay, I didn't think I was in range. But... <sighs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling with knowing when to call it quits. Because realistically, like, what... What could possibly come of this? What good could come of talking to this person, you know? Like, we have good moments. There's a lot of good memories, there's a lot of good history, but... I'm struggling with how it ended. Because I admit, like, I was... I was being a dick. We were just... We were fighting a lot. But she just, like, called it quits and said, like, I can't handle this. I can't handle this, I'm done. And it pretty much, like, ghosted me. Wouldn't talk to me, wouldn't, like, give my shit back, wouldn't... Wouldn't anything. Just fucking vanished. And it, uh... That shit hurt. That really hurt. And I spent the year, like... I spent all 2023, like, focusing on me. And trying to be better. Because I recognized... That I did things in the relationship that were... Unacceptable. Like, I would just get mad for no reason and take it out on her. Or I would ignore her. Shit like that is what I mean by take it out on her. I'd ignore her. I'd fight her over nothing. I would, like, nitpick. And I got in therapy and I worked on a lot of my issues. Improved my academic life. Got promoted at work and all this other shit. Like, I really put my life together. And she essentially spent the year just fucking off and doing nothing. She, like, burned out. She had other things that had happened after we broke up that were, like, bad. I'm not going to go into her information, but... She had a really rough year, and it's like, I spent all this time being the best version of myself, and I'm fucking, I'm so much happier with my life, and then you just show up out of nowhere and expect me to just let you back in, like nothing happened? You know, it's a bit, it is a bit of an ego thing, like, what the fuck? The fucking almighty pushed me, okay, but it is like an ego thing, because like, who the fuck are you? You fucking wasted this last year doing God knows what, and I put my life- I picked myself up and put my life back together. Who the hell are you to come back into my life and expect any kind of kindness from me? Even after she's, like, apologized and done all of these nice things and, like... Really made herself vulnerable to show, like, just how sorry she was for everything that happened. I still have that, like, residual anger that just... <sighs> I don't know. I firmly believe that life and love is very messy. I don't think I've ever seen, like, a good relationship last. By that, I mean, there's no such thing as a good relationship that just works for no reason. It takes two good partners. Two good partners can make anything work. It's not just a good relationship or a perfect relationship by default. I just, I don't believe in the idea of the one, and that sort of ties into that, like, being the best possible partner you can be is what makes a relationship last, not some fucking written in the stars bullshit. So that makes me, I don't know, I don't know, if you got, you know, you guys know, if you've like fallen in love and broken up you just get delusional and you start tweaking like what the fuck am i even talking about this is nonsense <sighs> i just want to be loved man <laughs> straight up i just want to be loved ain't nothing wrong with that and i'm tired of uh i'm tired of fucking with these hoes having hoes and all is fun until like nah, actually it's not fun it's actually really fucking mentally draining because you like don't even feel anything for a lot of these girls and you know that they don't feel anything for you like you're just a you're a fucking body i remember my first time when i was the booty call i was like damn <laughs> brought my ass over fucked me and then told me to leave what the hell is this how women feel i became a feminist on the spot i understood in that moment but yeah I think I'm looking for love in the wrong places. I'm looking for love somewhere where it no longer exists. And I know that. But of course, it's another thing to make the heart, you know, fall in line. Also, I don't know what's happening, dude. It, it was after I was fucking drinking. I guess I got so drunk, my muscle memories, like, reset. Because I fucking suck at Deep Woken now.